welcome back everybody to the last workbench of 2022. Um, I did one last week and that was for three weeks, almost a month's worth of work. And this one is just for the last week. So this is just the stuff that I got done in the last week. And I was trying to race through it to get the um, Battlestar Galactica project finished. Um, but... Not quite there yet. I still have some of the civilian ships left to do. Um, and I have several squadrons of fighters for both the Cylons and the Colonials. And I didn't manage to get it done. It's just, it was just, there was just so much traveling over the Christmas week. I just, I must have gone a thousand miles. Um, and I didn't have a lot of time. But yeah, so this is what I managed to get done. I guess it'll have to wait for the first couple of weeks of um, 2023 to be finished. But I thought I'd just show it off before I do another video video later today. Let me just uh, distract the cat here. Um, I'm going to do another video later today where I am going to be showing you what I completed for 2022. Now, I already have some of the stuff laid out. I mean, this is just a small portion of it. <laughs> I have so much more to, to lay out. And that's going to be a job in itself. So, not really looking forward to that. But I feel like it's good to get an idea of how much work I physically got done uh, hobby-wise in 2023. Um, now, while my cat agonizes over me talking to a black camera versus playing ball with him, um, I will just show you that these are um, a mix of different manufacturers. Now, I know these ones here are Ironwind metals, these two metal ones. I know the fighters... The Mark II, Mark VII's, the Raptors, and the Cylon Raiders, um, or fighters, whatever they're called, they're from Bergstrom, Studio Bergstrom. Now, the space stations, here's three space stations. There's uh, two Colonial and one Cylon, and along with the resin Cylon base stars, I don't know who they're from. I can't remember. This project was something that I bought years ago, and I mean... When was Battlestar Galactica the remake? When was that? Oh, it was 2007, 2009 maybe? Um, that's when I bought these, around 2010-ish. So it's been 12 years sitting in a box. And I have moved that box through several home moves. I've moved it through several renos. And I was actually going to sell it at a flea market. Well, like, um, not a flea market, but um, a buy and sell in Hamilton, Ontario, uh, about maybe a month and a half ago, two months ago, and I thought, no, you know what, I better not do that. I, uh, it cost a lot of money, so, you know what, maybe I'll paint it. So, anyway, I got it out of the box, and for some reason I had a couple of weeks left in the year, uh, and I thought, you know what, I can get this stuff painted pretty quickly if I just do a, uh, a fast job, just like grays and Cylons or Chrome, I mean, it won't be that hard. But there was just so much time taken up with shopping and visiting family and driving that I, and I didn't get done. But I'll show you what I did get done. I'll take the camera down off of this little stand here and I'll show you uh, in detail what I did. And then I'm going to show you what I got for Christmas, either from my wife, my son, my family, or from myself. So just hold on. I'll be right back with a closer look. Okay, the first thing that I did was I did some of these resin... Um, I guess are colonial. It's essentially the fleet that escapes with a Galactica in the TV show. I got several of them done. These ones here with the bubbles. These are agricultural ships. These are mining ships. Uh, these are just transports. I don't know what this one here is or these two. There's about 10 others upstairs uh, that are on the painting desk. So I'll get to them probably next week. But I got the start on them. I was hoping to be finished today, but nah, I'm out of, out of energy. I got two more uh, frigates done. Oh, I'm on weird zoom mode. Hold on. There we go. I got two more of these uh, frigates done. One's a missile frigate here, the one on the right. And this is a gun frigate here, the one on the left. Um, and they're really nice. Took a long time to paint all the individual panels, different colored grays. But I think together they look really good. I did um, two more Mark II Viper squadrons. There's one there and one at the back there. I did one score, two squadrons of Mark VII's. Uh, four Raptors. Here's the Colonial. Um, let's start with this one here. This is essentially a defense station. It's got uh, lots of guns, fighter hangers um, all over it. 
This is not quite a defense station, but it's got lots of hangers in it. I'm not too sure it's got radar dishes on it somewhere. There was one here and one broke off when I was carrying it, so god damn that. Um, so I got those finished. Now they have underneath too, they have bottoms as well. They sit pretty high off the table, which I wasn't that fond of. I was hoping maybe the ships would go there, but no. Um, and they're on heavy duty metal stands because they're very heavy models. This is a Cylon. Um, um, right here, this is a Cylon, um, I think it's a space station, and it was on a stand, but the cat sat on it this morning when I was having my cup of tea, so it broke the base in half, so it's uh, requiring repairs. And then here's what I did with the Cylon ships from last um, last week's video. I basically just painted them, dry brushed them, the, I dry brushed the insides with chrome and painted the top with chrome, and I'm not going to show you any close-ups because... They're not the best resin models, but that's good enough for me. That is what I got done this week painting wise. Again, there is no more capital ships. I've done all of the ships. Um, there is just the civilian fleet, the remainder of the civilian, civilian fleet. There's like the, um, the presidential barge, whatever that's called. Uh, there's the big uh, luxury liner. There is the ship with the big aquarium or whatever that dome is there's a few more there's about eight more ships that i have to do and they're upstairs and then i got a boatload i mean a boatload of of fighters to do and hmm, we'll see if i get to them or not next week but uh, i'm going to clear this off and i'm going to show you what i got um over the holidays okay so i have a pile of stuff in front of me just going to show you what I got over the Christmas break um, from various people and uh, we'll make it quick. Um, the first thing that I got was, um, I'll show you here, was these terrain crates. Um, one is the uh, City Accessories box from Mantic. Now, the stuff looks really nice. We'll see what it paints like. It looks like it's going to be fantastic but this is more, more for my modern stuff um kind of like um when i showed off these guys last week it's going to be for that kind of gaming specter operations um well i'll show you that in a second the next one was the street scatter which is cool for i guess you know modern gaming zombie gaming that kind of stuff This was from my wife for Christmas. Uh, I'll show you the big one, which is the city block or whatever it's called. So she got me that as well. So she got me this along with the two other things. And um, yeah, that this looks amazing. I can't wait to get started. I did open it. The saran wrap's gone just because I was so excited on Christmas Day. I wanted to see what it was like. Now when I... When I opened it, um, it just it's just a bunch of stuff in bags. There's like 15 bags of just stuff, and there's no assembly instructions. So I have no idea. I I wanted to start on it on it immediately because I was so excited when I opened it. I was like, "Wow, you got me this!" Um, and I I I have been telling her I want to try and focus on more terrain versus um, figures uh, this next coming year. Just because I want to do more battle reports and have more varied looking battlefields versus what I've been currently doing. I, I have terrain. I've lost of terrain in the house. I just haven't painted much of it. Um, so she seen me a few weeks ago making trees. I was I probably made 50 trees and maybe, I don't know, maybe 45 pieces of road. Um, so she's like, oh, you're looking to, to get more terrain. So this is what she ordered when she seen that. But yeah, I'm not looking forward particularly to assembling this. I've heard it goes together really nicely, but oh my god. I mean, just a bunch of stuff in a bunch of bags. The one thing I will say about the stuff in the bags is that it's not on sprues. So there's no cutting involved. Um, but it's going to be a task to put this stuff together, I think, because there's a lot of it in here. But I'm very happy to have it. So that's from my wife. Uh, let's see. My son got me... 
Okay, I had to edit that out there. The cat's kind of, I don't know if you can see the cat looking at me very suspiciously over there. Um, my son got me this for Christmas, the new Alpha Strike box set for Battletech. And I am so excited for this. Um, and I don't know why, but I'm not as excited for the reposed uh, miniatures, along with the new miniature here, whatever that's called. Uh, I'm actually more excited for the the travel, um, the ability to take this away when I go visit my parents or something. You know, uh, they, they live so far away now, I, I can't just go for an hour and a half like I used to. I have to go for the an, a day or two because it's <laughs> they're uh, several hours away. Um, but I'm more excited for the the cardstock terrain that's in here. And all these little buildings that comes in here. There's so many of them. So there's little 3D terrain, and then there's uh, these trees which you snap together to make kind of 3D tre uh, trees. And the ability to put this game along with the rules the miniatures and the dice and the cards in this one box put the lid on it like this obviously and just me and my son or me and my wife can play this game on the go and that is exciting to me um so very very happy about that the new alpha strike oh plus one more thing i've um i've seen the price online for this it differs wildly depending on where you go some places, I, uh, we got this for $73 Canadian. Uh, some places it's $76, so okay. Some places it's $82, $83, uh, okay. Some places it's over $100, so I don't know where the pricing model for this is set at. But some of the discount stores have this for almost $100 or over $100 versus some of them have it for $73, $74, Why is the price so wild? Anyway, that was just a rando thought. Um... That is what I got for Christmas from my family. Uh, my son got me the Alpha Strike. My wife got me the Terrain. Now, as part of my Christmas gift, uh, my wife um, wanted me to drive to a city near me. Well, not really near me, but to Hamilton, Ontario. And for some reason, I live in the in um, just north of Toronto. And there's really nothing just north of Toronto. There's there's hobby stores that will do Games Workshop stuff, and and Pokemon cards and Magic the Gathering like crazy, but not much that does like historical miniatures or niche miniature stuff. But Hamilton, for some reason, has like four places that do this kind of stuff. So we went to Hamilton, and we went to a place called Trista Minis, and um, what an amazing store. I've been to Hamilton before, I've been to Black Knight Games, which was, which was pretty cool. I've been to... Uh, torchlight which was really really neat like hidden in the corner of this plaza you would never know it was even there but when you go in it's at the building's at a weird angle like a pizza slice so the front is like four foot wide and then you walk in and it just goes out like a pizza slice towards the crust and it was full of so many cool things mainly games workshop stuff but the amount of um painting and terrain and diorama material there was insane not that much historical stuff if any really more Lord of the Rings, Games Workshop, that kind of stuff, uh, Age of Sigmar stuff. Um, but Trista Minis in Hamilton was like, if you've ever been to Toronto, you've been to Meeple Mart. It's kind of like a mini condensed Meeple Mart. Meeple Mart without, without a warehouse of board games. It had so many cool historical stuff. Like I walked in there and the first thing I seen was this on the shelf. And I thought, what? They have uh, epic black powder stuff. Now, I haven't started my Napoleonic or British um, epic game stuff, but they had the Commander's Packs. Now, I didn't pick up the Prussians. I picked up the British, and for some reason, the French are in this generic packaging. But I picked up the two Commander Packs. Um, I picked up... They had a whole section on Perry miniatures, so I've always wanted these nicely proportioned American GIs for World War II. Um... I don't collect American for bolt action. I do have the tanks. I just don't have the figures because I cannot stand the the faces, the heads, and the stouty dwarf look of those figures. I, I don't know why. I, I Just the bolt action infantry was really make me cringe. Whereas the, the Perry 28mm figures, they look mint. So I bought them. So that was a present to me from... From there, but they had Perry, all kinds of Perry stuff. It wasn't they had blister packs. All, you never find that in Canada in stores. Like, if my wife and child hadn't have been there and I had unlimited money, like 
I would have need a, I needed a dump truck to come help me carry the stuff out of there. Um, my son, when we were there, he bought me this. You probably can't tell what this is, but he was so excited because I was, I was talking at home that I needed more. I needed more uh, panther and wolfhound mechs, um, or light mechs for the game because I seem to have a lot of mediums, a lot of heavies, and a lot of assaults, but I don't have that many lights. So he um, found the only box that had panther on it, and he <laughs> took his mother's debit card and he went up and he bought this on his own, like just wandered up, bought it on his own, put it in a bag, and he kept the secret until we got home. And yeah, I'm really excited. I'm really happy. It was really nice of him to uh, to spend my money like that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They also had at Tristan Minis rule books for various things. So I picked up Blood and Steel, which is essentially Blood and Thunder or whatever the name of the rule set is for Victorian Age combat. And this is a really nice book. At first, I thought it was a, like a supplement for the main book because there's lots of army lists in here, and I was kind of worried, like, oh no, it's only an army list book. I don't have the actual rules, but no, the rules are there. So I am happy that. Happy that I got that. I actually took it back. I took it off the shelf, put it in my basket, then took it out of the shelf, put it back in the... On the took it out of the basket, put it back on the shelf a few times. And then I decided, you know what? No. I'll get it because I like it. Um, let's see here. We'll go past... Oh, there's one more thing from there. I, I didn't need this, but I got it anyway. This is the beginner box for Battletech, the new one. Simply because it has the new mini. So it's a $25 mini, essentially. Uh, but it does have it does have um, some cards in there and the mat and stuff, so I can use it, and I can also um, gift the mech to my nephew or my son, the uh, Griffin. But it's always handy to have a second one anyway. But I hummed and hawed about this for a long time, but it was like twenty three dollars. So I'm like, yeah, forget it. I'll buy it. You know how I say forget it a lot. I'll buy it. <laughs> That's my excuse. And then I bought this, um, Plasticraft pre-colored pre terrain. And just, I just wanted something quick to put in the middle of a bolt action game on the table. Just to, you know, And it's got an interior, which I thought was really cool. Now, I, I asked him if he had any more, and he had this one and he had a church. But the church was 80 bucks, and I don't didn't want to spend $80 um, just on one thing. Um, but by his reaction of finally selling this... I don't think they're going to be ordering any more. So I think I got the last of whatever this is. Um, I'm probably going to have to, if I like it, I'm probably going to have to order online from the manufacturer, I think. Because he seemed ecstatic. ecstatic. His words were, finally, finally someone bought this. <laughs> like, uh oh, that doesn't sound good. Um, and that was it from my visit. Oh, no, that wasn't it for the visit. I got uh, for Trista. I also got... Uh, Vallejo. Now, games. Where every store has Games Workshop shop aerosol cans. Every store has, pretty much every store has the Army Painter aerosol cans. Games Workshop, the aerosol cans are excellent product, but they're far too expensive. Like, I mean, disgustingly expensive. And Army Painter are affordable, but the quality is just the pits. Sometimes you buy a can, shake it up, Spray it, everything looks great, and you're like, yeah, this is, why would I ever buy GW again? And then you'll go back to the store, and you'll get another color, and you'll shake it up, and you'll spray it, and it either the tip is destroyed, or spitting, or the product dries weird, or it comes out odd. It, Army Painter, I cannot handle ordering their primers. I just cannot ruin any more models by buying their crap, and I can't afford Games Workshop. So, it seems to be more and more stores are getting these Vallejo hobby paints, and I've used the white version of this, and it looked great. So I bought uh, Panzer Yellow and Olive Drab, and these are going to be for my um, the first full project. Full the first full project of the new year will be the 12 millimeter Victrix uh, World War II figures that I showed off eight months ago. They're next up. So German German camo for the tanks and U.S. camo or British camo for theirs. So I got those. They also had a huge selection of paints, which not a big deal, but I got a black, I got a silver right there, black and silver, and then I got this um, candy red or ruby red color, um, which I'm going to be using over the silver to do some 
Thousand Sons. My next Horse Heresy army will be Thousand Sons whenever I get to that. Not happening anytime soon, but good to have the colors when you do get in the mood. Um, last interesting thing. I got Water Foam. And I'm going to have a blast with this stuff. I'm going to be putting this on all my on all my miniatures that have... Um, I, I have another box, that, a tub that I got previous, which is the Atlantic Ocean Water and the Pacific Ocean Water from the same company, uh, AK. And when I make the waves, I'm going to put this on top, and that's going to make it all come together. So I got that as well. And last thing, I got two of these plastic glues because I have tried to find this plastic glue, this, this particular one, this thin stuff with the long needle. Now, you can get Tamiya and stuff, and they're... They're fine, but I cannot handle the Army Painter plastic glue that you find everywhere. It is stringy. It's like it's like you get melted cheese and you pull it apart. There's all these glue strings that you have to you get wrapped around the model or on your finger. It's just a pain in the ass. And when you have 150 plastic miniatures, multi-part miniatures to make, and you have that stringy glue, I, I just I just want to break the table. That's how frustrated I, it makes me. Why make a product that is just so shit? Um, this stuff's more expensive, but it's thinner. There's never any strings. You can apply it into like little areas. I love it. But for some reason, you can't find it hardly anywhere anymore. You go to order from Games Workshop and you have to sign a waiver that you know what you're getting now. And I asked the store owner, like, why can I not find this anymore? Why is it so hard to get restock? And it had something to do with a new Canadian law. I don't know if it's a single use plastic law or something. There's some sort of hazard customs declaration that has to be processed now to order this stuff in or to send it to you so um it's delaying delivery of glue so i bought the two that he had left and i'm not gonna have to worry about that for a while but it took me about a month to find that um the last thing i want to show you guys is the rule books that i've been reading um for the games that i want to play next year uh, the first one being, I have finally got my Nevermind the Bull Hooks book. It's not even, I didn't even take it out of the wrapper, fellas. Look, it's still in the wrapper. I even bought the the tokens. And most most times, I, I spend my money on the models. I don't spend my money on the books because I have access to a color printer. And I can print off my stuff, no problem. But I, for some projects, I just really want the actual book. So I ordered this in. And I am ecstatic can't wait to get started playing that game and I hope to show some off on the channel. So that'll go with all my War of the Roses figures that I have laid out right there. So there's that one. Uh, the next one is Castles in the Sky. These books are pretty cheap. $20 so um, I don't know if you've seen but I bought a bunch of these models. I have them everywhere. I have I don't know a couple of hundred of them now painted. But I am looking forward to getting started on that. Like, really excited. So excited that I'm not doing it. Just because I have so much stuff to do. But every time I look at it and I see this art, like, you know, the ship's kind of like, I don't know if they're sinking or falling or whatever it is. I just love the idea of this. Now, I would really love a, a company to make this style ship. Now, Leviathans is doing it, but they're big ships and chunky. But if I could find a manufacturer that makes smaller ships, like, yeah, maybe the yay big... But looks like this. Oh my god, like World War One kind of dreadnoughts. Anyway, throw them my money. Um, I will show you. Uh, this is Black Powder Red Earth. I got this from Amazon.com. Um, this is also a rule book for modern gaming. Now the the website for this has a starter set with the rule book and the figures and the mat. It has a, a special mat with little uh, two dimensional homes in it. Or buildings in it, but the cost was 350 US, I think it was 350. And just shoot me right in the face. I can't, who can afford that? I mean, I spend, I spend an awful lot of money on miniatures every year, as you can probably tell. But 350 dollars, like, what are you, Adeptus Titanicus? Like, I know there's a cost to everything and you have to make a profit on stuff, but could you not make a smaller box set for a hundred bucks? Does it have to be, or could you not sell the terrain tiles separately? Does it have to be 350 to get the game? So I'm not going to worry about the starter set. I have my own miniatures, um, and I just bought the rule book. 
Now, when you buy the starter set, you get all this stuff. You get all these little cards and the building, the flat tile buildings, and you can play with your 3D miniatures on a 2D surface. Scrap that. I'm going to use the the um, city, Mantic City game stuff that my wife bought me or you seen earlier with this rule set. I want to see if this rule set's any good. Now, I also, speaking of modern gaming, I have Spectre Operations. And now I have Black Pride Red, Red Earth, and I also have the 3D or the PDF I printed off of INX In Country, which is another set of modern rules that are just come out. Um, I'm going to try them too. They're much smaller boards, but I'm going to try this game, this game, and Spectre, and see which one I like. Now, I don't know what the difference is. I've seen this game being played, this Black Pad Red Earth game, and it looks really really fast, really uh, really deadly. Um, Spectre is a little more gr um, crunchy, granular. There's more... Um, it seems like there's more to do. It's more like a traditional miniatures game, whereas this kind of feels um, oddly board gamey, maybe a bit. Um, and then I'm going to try this INX, INX In Country. And we're going to see which one I like the most. Um... I also bought from Amazon the the um, graphic novels for this Black Powder Red Earth game. So you see number one, number two, and number three. And these are, I haven't read them yet, but these are, the, the colors are just amazing in here. So I'm hoping to read these graphic novels and have a game get me in the mood for playing the actual game the, those are just a novel thing i don't know why i just love the look of them i mean i i'll do it again look look at the graphics on this there's some seriously talented people and i'm not one of them anyway uh two more games that i printed off that i bought online from pdf i bought honors of war for my seven years war stuff you've probably seen in previous months i have a seven years war army I did that, and then I wanted some late Romans Arthurian skirmish, so I bought Dux Ballorum. And oh, look at that, that's nice, it's very nice. Um, lots of artwork in here, so I'm hoping to get a game of that in soon. And yeah, that is all of the stuff that I got over Christmas, and I'm really looking forward to getting started. Um, it's New Year's today, so Happy New Year, everyone. I'll be back later on, either today or tomorrow, with my um, table lined up with all of the stuff that I painted in 2022. I've already started putting stuff out, so you can see. There's my cat in the window. Boom. Isn't she pretty? Hi, Jellico. Hi, Jelly. Um, she's a really nice cat. Um, my other cat that you see all the time, Sheriff, he's a bit of an asshole, but he, he's, he's he sticks to me like glue, but he's like he doesn't like me. He kind of... If I don't give him treats on time, I get bitten. If I'm sitting in his spot on the couch, I get bitten. Um, but he follows me everywhere. And he doesn't eat when I'm away. He just waits for me to get home. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. Whereas she is more free-flowing. She is just happy. She wants to climb and jump. And when she's tired, she wants to snuggle. So anyway, I don't know where I went off on that cat tangent. But anyway, this is I'm starting to put the stuff out, lay it out. The entire table, there's all kinds of stuff. Don't even look. There's all kinds of stuff that I have to put out, and that'll probably take me the guts of the whole day. I'm also doing a count of how many figures I painted. Uh, so I have to... First, I have to get, get them out of their boxes, lay them out, count them, and then do the video, and then i got to put them all away. So it's going to take me quite a while. Um, so yeah, we'll see you again on the next one. Bye for now.